Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain what is an all-pass filter. Well, the name all-pass suggests that it passes everything. So why do you need a filter that passes all the frequencies anyway? It's as good as not using a filter at all. But there's a caveat here. The all-pass filter, yes, it does pass all the frequencies equally in amplitude, but does change the phase relationship among various frequencies. Now this makes a drastic change. So all pass filters have a flat frequency response, obviously because they approve pass all the frequencies equally in amplitude. They neither amplify nor attenuate any part of the frequency spectrum, so that they don't disturb the frequency spectrum at all, but rather they display the signals in time as a function of frequency. Literally, an all pass filter just passes different frequencies at different speeds. Let's learn more about these. The time displacement accomplished by an all-pass filter is specified by its phase response. One of the greatest use of an all-pass filter is to perform various frequency-dependent time alignment or time displacement functions. We'll look at these applications in detail later in this video. Due to the nature of you know, displacing functions in time, they are also referred to as delay equalizers or phase correctors or sometimes even phase rotators. Alright, so far we have learned that an all-pass filter passes all the frequencies equally in amplitude but does change the phase relationship between the frequencies. To understand what happens there, let's understand what is a phase of a wave first. Well, phase of a wave describes the position or location of a point relative to a reference point in a periodic wave. Literally, what it describes is where the point is located in time relative to a reference point. I'm going to stress the word relative here because phase is indeed relative, it's not absolute. It is defined only with respect to a reference point. Now what is phase difference? Phase difference is a difference between phase of two points in a wave. So let's say there is a point at 0 degrees and the other at 90 degrees. So the difference between them is 90 degrees and that is in fact the phase difference. It can also be expressed in radians which is pi by 2 radian. It can be positive, negative or zero. Let's look at how phase looks visually. Alright, here's the sinusoidal waveform. The y-axis represents the amplitude, x-axis is the angle traversed with a wave expressed in radian. So here, as the waveform follows a sinusoidal path, it starts at zero, reaches a positive extrema at pi by two radian, comes to the mean position at pi radian, goes to the negative extrema at three pi by two radian, and then comes back to the mean position at two pi radian. And then this cycle repeats itself. Alright, now let's look at different cases of phase difference. All right, here's an example of a phase difference of 90 degree or pi by 2 radian. So as we observe here, there is a black wave starting at 0 and there is a blue wave which starts at pi by 2 radian. And as it moves forward, we see that the phase difference is constant, which is pi by 2 radian. So in this case, we can say that the blue wave is leading the black wave with a phase difference of pi by 2 radian or 90 degrees. On the other hand, we can also say that the black wave is lagging behind the blue wave with a phase difference of pi by 2 radian. And if you change the you know, reference point, you can also uh, make a conclusion that the black wave is leading the blue wave. But at the end of the day, you know, the signs may change to, from positive to negative, but still the magnitude remains the same, which is pi by 2 radian or 90 degrees. Here is an example of a phase difference of 180 degree or pi radian. So in this case, we observe that the black wave is still starting at 0 degrees, whereas the red wave is starting at pi radian. And as it moves forward, we still observe that the phase difference is always constant, which is the pi radian or 180 degrees. So we can say that the red wave is leading the black wave with a phase difference of pi radian, 180 degrees, and the black wave is lagging behind the red wave with a phase difference of pi radian. And here's a special case, it actually forms a stationary wave where it just cancels out each other if the amplitudes are exactly the same, which leads to a destructive interference. So far, we have observed sinusoidal oscillations of pure sine waves. But sound, in general, is considered a complex mixture of frequencies unless it is a pure tone. Different frequencies in that complex mixture not only have different amplitudes, but also different phase relationship with each other. Now, due to the complex mixture of different frequencies and different phase relationship, there can be a positive, negative, or a zero phase difference. And this, in turn, can lead to phase cancellation over time due to destructive interference. Now, what is destructive interference? It occurs when two waves are out of phase with respect to each other or have a phase difference of 180 degrees or pi radian. 
Destructive interference is not good because it just removes the sound in question. There is another phenomenon that occurs when two waves are in phase with respect to each other or have a zero phase difference. That leads to something called as a constructive interference. It unnecessarily boosts those frequencies in question. All right, here's a simple representation of a complex sound wave. So as you observe in the picture, there are three sine waves. So the first wave is the black wave, second is the blue, and the third is the green wave. As you can observe here, the three waves have totally different amplitudes and totally different frequencies. They have different frequencies because as you can observe, the wavelengths are different for each of those waves. So now, if you start observing from the start, we can observe that the blue wave has a phase difference of pi by 2 with respect to the black wave, and the green wave has a phase difference of pi with respect to the black wave. But as time progresses, as you move toward the right, you do observe that the phase difference is no longer constant. And at one point near the end, you know, we can observe that the blue wave and the green wave are out of phase, and they're going to cancel out. And at some point, we can also observe that the blue wave and black wave are in phase, and they're going to add up constructively. So this is the complex phase relationship in a wave. All right, here's a phase response. It is related to the time delay encountered by the signal's frequency components. So the phase response changes as a function of frequency. As you can observe from the plot, you know, the y-axis represents the phase in degrees and the x represents the frequency in hertz. So the graph starts from, you know, at the top left corner and then ends up in the bottom right corner. So as the frequencies are increasing, the phase, you know, keeps changing as you can see in the curve. All right, now we have looked at the phase response, let's look at the frequency response. Well, as far as the frequency response is concerned, it's gonna pass all the frequencies. And this is how typically a frequency response would look like. It's just gonna pass every single frequency without any attenuation, without any boost, all the way from, you know, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz if you're considering the audio spectrum. All right, here's a typical circuit diagram to for an all-pass filter. So on the left, you have the input, and on the right, there is the output. There are some resistances and a variable capacitor C1, and then there is an op-amp to boost the signal. So it, it becomes an active circuit because it has a booster to power up. It doesn't power by itself. All right, let's look at some applications of an all-pass filter. The first application is along telephone wires. So when telephone signals are transmitted over telephone wires, they undergo changes in phase. We know that sound is a complex mixture of different frequencies and the different frequencies have different amplitudes and they have different phase relationship with respect to each other. Now this complex phase relationship between different frequencies leads to constructive and destructive interference as the wave moves forward in time. So at the end of the day, the wave after traveling some distance is no longer the same as it was transmitted before due to the constructive and destructive interference. So there needs to be a way to preserve the accuracy of the wave when it's being transmitted over long distances. And this can be accomplished by an all-pass filter because it adjusts the phase differences between the waves but doesn't alter the frequency component of the signal, thereby preserving the accuracy of the original signal. Another great application is in the audio world of achieving a great audio mix. An audio mix consists of different tracks, such as vocalists, guitarists, percussion instruments, and different types of drums, such as kick, snare, and hi-hat. Due to the vast spread of different frequencies and different instruments, there is a possibility that sound from one track is going to cancel and phase with a sound from another track. Or worse, a sound from one track is going to boost another frequency. So this can lead to constructive and destructive interference and can also spoil the entire sound quality and the you know, will not create a great mix. So an all-pass filter comes in very handy because it only alters the phase relationship between the signals but doesn't change the sound quality of the timbre. Hence, the spectral signature is preserved and hence, you know, it becomes a great mix. Some other applications include matching the phase between different signals. They can also be used to time align different components of a filter bank or a speaker crossover. And with longer impulse responses, they can be used to create different audio effects, at the same time preserving the spectral balance of a signal. They do not alter the frequency component, they only alter the phase. And that's why they're referred to as an all-pass filter, passing all the frequencies, only working with the phase. Alright, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.